Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do my most anticipated book releases of 2019. So I've done these uh, anticipated releases videos twice before and the first time I did it I think I mostly did it more as a wish list kind of thing um, and I didn't actually end up reading many of those books if any. Uh, I think I've read one of them and that was The White Book by Han Kang uh, which I read last year and loved. Um, but the anticipated releases I did last year, I haven't read a lot of them, uh, but I have gotten a few of them since then. So um, the beer one I tried and DNF'd because it was completely different from what I was expecting. The uh, Japanese novel, uh, The Territory of Light, uh, I have just recently bought. I'm trying uh, to sort of learn about my interests and to be more uh, realistic with uh, these anticipated releases being more like books I am into um, books I am anticipating that are coming out in the next couple of months and that I'm actually uh, likely to get during this year or very soon. Um, books that I just feel like uh, I don't just want to read them, I want to own them and I want to read them as soon as possible. So without further ado, let's talk about some upcoming book releases of 2019 that I'm really excited about. The first one is called Optic Nerve and it's by Maria Gainza. Uh, this is published in January by Harvel Secker and I actually have already pre-ordered this one. Um, it is a... Uh, I guess it's sort of interconnected short stories. From what I gather, it's sort of pieces about art seen through one woman's perspective. Um, and that is the only thing I really know about this book. Um, but I think I've said a few times uh, in the last couple of uh, months and weeks of 2018 that I really want to get into more reading more about art, art history. Um, and this book seemed like it sort of dealt with that uh, that, that area and real art pieces, uh, historical art pieces uh, and paintings especially uh, through a fictional uh, perspective. And it is a woman in translation which is something I'm always on the lookout for, new women in translation to uh, follow and it just sounded like a really interesting book. Uh, so I ended up pre-ordering it. The other book that is also coming out in January is Mouthful of Birds by Samantha Schweblin and this uh, this is published by Riverhead. So I am incredibly excited for this book. Uh, I think I will probably be getting the paperback that comes out in February if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but this is uh, Samantha Shrevelin wrote Fever Dream that I loved last year as I've mentioned in my favorite books of 2018 video. Um, I thought she was, I, I thought that book was fantastic and I think she's a fantastic writer. Uh, so as soon as I finished it, I looked up for more of her books in, uh, translated into English. And uh, the only thing that I could find is that this book was coming out right at the beginning of 2019. So basically I've been waiting for about half a year um, and I will definitely be pre-ordering this one as well or buying it as soon as it comes out, definitely. Um, and this is Mouthful of Birds is a short story collection, uh, so a, a different form. Uh, but I think because Fever Dream is quite a short novel, uh, I think you can tell that she's really good at playing within a, a limited space. Uh, so I think she will probably be a fantastic short story writer. There's quite a few that is coming out in February that I'm looking forward to. And one of them is The Wisdom of Wolves uh, by Ellie H. Redinger, and this is published by Michael Yosef. Uh, so this is a nonfiction book about wolves and uh, obviously the wisdom of wolves specifically. Um, as far as I can remember, this is written by someone who has studied them in the, the Yellowstone Wolves. Uh, and I read last year a book about the Yellowstone Wolves called American Wolf by Neat Blakesley. Um, and picking that book up, I was basically looking for this kind of book. I was looking for a book that dealt with the wolves directly, uh, their nature, their habits, um, sort of the, the interrelations between them and everything like that. Uh, and this book seems to deal more with their behavior, whereas 
American Wolf turned out to be more interested in um, the politics surrounding the Yellowstone Wolves and that wasn't really what I was looking for so this seems to be closer to what I was hoping to get out of American Wolf. Another non-fiction book that is also coming out in February that I'm really looking forward to is called The Collected Schizophrenias um, by Esme Weyoung uh, Wang, uh, and this is published by Grey Wolf Press. Um, this is a collection of essays about the author's uh, experiences of schizophrenia. That is, uh, the, the way it's described is sort of seems to be essay slash a memoir uh, told in pieces uh, and about various aspects of schizophrenia uh, as an experience as a uh, mental illness. Um, and the, the way it's described is sounds beautiful and honest and very interesting. Uh, I am really interested in psychology in general uh, and mental illness, especially um, like linked with psychology and neuroscience. Um, but also of the experience, and I haven't actually read that much about mental illness from um, in, in, in books. Uh, I feel like I know quite a bit about uh, mental illness through uh, like reading about it for school um, and, and more indirectly, but I haven't really read much uh, with that as a as a core theme um, and this book just sounded like a very beautiful and honest portrayal of schizophrenia that is one of the, the mental illnesses I know least about. I feel like it's often portrayed in very stereotypical ways and always the same way. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading more about the experiences um, and getting sort of closer to what it's actually like. The next one I have that's coming out in February is called Where Reasons End by Yi Yun Li and this is published by Hamish Hilton. Um, this is a fiction book. It is about a mother who um, whose son commits suicide and uh, her way of dealing with this, uh, this uh, sorrow um, and grief is through writing. Uh, and so this book is her imagined conversation with her son. Um, I love books about motherhood, uh, about the relationship between children and their parents, um, as I think uh, has probably come across before. I've read quite a few of those kinds of books recently, I feel like. Um, and I just really love that exploration of a bond that is so universal but can take so many different shapes um, and some of the tension in that relationship as well. The next one I'm actually really really excited about is coming out in Sweden. Uh, it is called Bakom Alfons by Klaus Gustafsson. This is um, published in March um, and as I said, it is published in Sweden, but I wanted to mention it just in case I have any um, viewers that watch uh, that that can read Swedish. This is a biography of Gunilla Bergström, who is the creator of Alfons Åberg, uh, who is called Alfie something, I think, in English. I will put a picture of one of the translated uh, versions of her books. Um, but the uh, Alfonso Oberg books are uh, children's picture books uh, following a young boy called Alphonse um, who has grown up in a single parent household uh, but the single parent is his father uh, which I think is pretty rare in a books tar targeted towards younger readers but I read them as a child and loved them and they have such a warmth to them um, and uh, I I've actually um, in my family we've read them in multiple languages because um, my father is from Iran and my mother is half Finnish so we've also had uh, translated versions of this book uh, along with the original Swedish ones uh, and I think they have actually been translated into quite a few languages. I've seen a few of the translations in the library. Um, but I loved these books as a kid and I have, I don't think there has been any biography of Gunilla Bergström before this. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning more about her because she seemed to be such a fantastic person as well. The last one I have is called Lampy and the Children of the Sea by Annette Schaap and this is published in May by Pushkin Children's Press. Um, 
This is a children's book that follows a young girl who grows up in a lighthouse, I think. The way I heard about this book was actually through Amy Anders, who mentioned this book in her favorites, uh, favorite books of 2018 video, uh, where she has sort of categories for uh, various different kinds of books, and one of those categories were for middle grade uh, or children's books, I think. Um, and this was one of them, and it is uh, originally published in um, in the Netherlands, um, and it is being translated into English in May. Uh, so she talks wonderfully about this book uh, and uh, talks very fondly about it. So I will link her video in the description in case you're interested in more about this book. Uh, but I thought it sounded fantastic from her description. So I sort of I uh, was googling it, just looking if there was possibly a Swedish translation of it. Um, but saw that uh, Pushkin is uh, publishing it in into English in May. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting that one. It seems to have sort of uh, some elements of nature in it, which is always a bonus with me. So yeah, so those are a few of the books that I'm really, really looking forward to coming out in the first like few months of 2019. I'm sure I will learn about a lot of other titles that I'm looking forward to as the weeks go by and we see more of these anticipated releases videos and lists and everything like that but these are books that I am anticipating and am also likely to actually buy um, or to read as soon as possible so hopefully I can talk more about these books in uh, the upcoming months and weeks of the year so let me know if you are anticipating any of these books or any other books that you're really looking forward to coming out let me know if I missed something that you think I will love uh, coming out in 2019 I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon bye